Right, in the studio right now is San Francisco Mayor London Breed. We have a lot to catch up on since she was here last time. We have a couple topics we want to discuss. Mayor Breed, thanks for joining us. Of Good course. to see you. My Glad pleasure. you're here. Let's start with first what happened in the West Portal neighborhood with this family that was waiting at this bus stop trying to go to the zoo. Yeah. And a car just plowed right into them. A 78-year-old woman has now been arrested. There are calls now to make streets safer in San Francisco, also possibly take away car traffic totally from that area. I just want to get your take on what happened and what you think yeah. can be done. Well, it's definitely a tragedy and it's, you know, heartbreaking to think of um, just what happened here to this uh, family and how it's not only impacted their family, but the surrounding community, our first responders, the merchants that were there, the people who saw it and called 911. It, it just has been devastating for, for that community and for so many people in San Francisco. Um, we, we definitely need to improve uh, street conditions in our city as a whole. And what we have already um, done through our Vision Zero efforts is to identify the most challenging intersections in order to make structural changes uh, to, to those particular areas. Uh, this is definitely an area where um, there was a need for improvement, specifically where the entryway is Even for before meeting. what happened. Well, not where the bus stop is, where this happened, mm -hmm. but more so where the entryway at West Portal is for um, Muni. So our, our goal is to do everything we can to look at this area as well and to in, in, include improvements um, to the area and to just really be uh, as aggressive as we are trying to be um, to change our street infrastructure so that uh, cars, bikes, and people who walk and wait for the bus are able to do so safely. And, and it's a matter of changing what San Francisco has always been to what San Francisco needs to be in order to ensure the safety of our streets. On that, tomorrow there will be a automated license plate reader installation. I know you're yes. going to be part of this. About 100 of them are going to be going up eventually. Mm -hmm. So where are they going to go and why does the city need them and what are they going to be used for? Are you are, you think I'm really going to tell you where they are? <laughs> um, Maybe one or two of well, them? Well, we have about 400 cameras going up in about 100. 400 in about 100 intersections throughout San Francisco. And the, the point is to help us combat crime, um, to deal with uh, people um, who might want to steal cars, car break-ins, um, sideshows, all of these things. The ability to have these cameras and to pull up, for example, uh, red Corvette and to look up and, and to see where all the red Corvettes were, the time, the date, the license plate, to be able to use that information if necessary to combat some of the problems that we're having in San Francisco, it's going to be extraordinary. So I'm looking forward to it. If I'm driving in the city, will I be, will I be able to see them? Like, is it noticeable you, where they are? Like, it's not going to be a surprise after the fact? Yeah, you, you might notice where they okay. are. So yeah. once they're up, you'll be able to tell where they are. For the most part, yes. Okay. But, but, but just so you know, you may not be paying much attention to catch them. Well, I hope I don't uh, need to be caught. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I hope you don't either. <laughs> so uh, next up is that the Mission Street vending ban, the moratorium, has been extended. Do you know why? Well, because we were able to, I mean, it, look, state law makes it challenging for us as a city to um, impose um, a lot of restrictions on people who who are vending in San Francisco. Fencing is a whole nother ball game and we're working with our state legislatures to make changes to the policy. But we were able to take the data and to use that as a way to do a moratorium in the first place and to extend it as well while we go through this process to hopefully change state law so that we can enforce the law against illegal uh, fencing because that's the real problem we have here. The people who are stealing, going out, selling their goods on the street corners. I mean, the neighborhood has gotten better. It's gotten safer. People feel much more excited about it. But again, there's a state law that prohibits us from banning it entirely. And our goal is to try and make sure that we make adjustments to that law so that people are not selling stolen goods mm -hmm. on the streets of San Francisco. Do you think it will become permanent? Um, well, if we, it won't be able to become permanent unless we change state law. Got it. 
Okay, what about the Sky Star Wheel? Is that going to be permanent in Fisherman's Wharf? It got That's moved. my plan. That's the plan. It's got moved from Golden Gate Park to Fisherman's Wharf just yes. in time for APEC, and its lease is up, but you want it to keep it forever and ever and ever? It's become a huge attraction. It was popular in Golden Gate Park, but when we moved it to Pier 39, it's become even more popular. And locals, because typically locals don't go to Pier 39, well, locals are going to Pier 39. Go well, someone comes to visit and you're yes. like, they want to go see it and you yes. take them there. Yes, but also, it's the views, mm -hmm. the daytime, the nighttime, mm -hmm. just sunset. to look at the sunset, the beauty of San Francisco, the water, the Golden Gate Bridge, and Coit Tower, it's, it's, it's just magical. And when you're up there on this Ferris wheel at the top and looking, you just take it all in and it just puts a smile on your face. And people want joy. Mm -hmm. They want joy, they want happiness, and this is just one of those additional reasons why San Francisco is a beautiful, captivating, and majestic place. So what will it take to get it there permanent? Who's a... Uh... Who do you have the, to convince? The, the Port of San Francisco is responsible for the property, but right now it looks like they have a really strong interest in staying. It's doing really well um, in terms of revenues, and as long as we want them and the people go, I'm sure they'll want to stay there. Mayor Leonard yeah. Breed, thanks for coming in studio today to talk with us. It was tight timing there, but you yeah, made it. Yeah, really tight. <laughs> <laughs> she sat down. She walked across the camera and sat down. We're like, and here we go. That's live TV for you. Oh, I had one more question. Willie Brown turns 90 tomorrow. What is he doing to celebrate? Are you going to be I would just say, it? for Willie Brown, 90 is the new 50. <laughs> because that man runs around San Francisco, like walks around, goes everywhere, still gives speeches, mm -hmm. stills in high still is in high demand. Uh, we're going to be celebrating Willie Brown in San Francisco. Uh, parties at City Hall and different restaurants and venues all over San Francisco. He's a real trailblazer, and we're really excited to really toast him in this way. Uh, it'll be a, quite the party, a, a Willie Brown party. Oh, yes. Mayor Bree, thank you for joining us here on Cron 4. All right, thank you.